Guys, let's try this again. <laughs> this KB5 MIQ big boy. I'm working on a video here. I forgot to write something down that's kind of important. All right, that old ham radio cat, the star of the show, just jumped up here. She's been a little mad at us. We've been out of pocket all weekend. She's getting over it, I think. Uh, we have a thousand and ten subscribers. I see it in the chat gadget there. Man, guys, I appreciate it. I really do. We're going to kick a giveaway off this coming weekend. I haven't had a chance to go get the prize yet. And I don't like to start it until I have it in hand. So I'm going up tomorrow and I'll get with y'all. We'll start it off next weekend. Two subjects tonight. ARRL, uh, yes or no for new hams. And we're going to talk about satellite uh, ops here in a little bit. ARRL is catching a lot of flack right now. <laughs> for this cover of this month's QST. And it's showing these high school kids supposedly making contacts and they're all grinning and smiling and holding the microphone and they don't have coax hooked to the radio, all right? That kind of reminds me of a picture that was running around here a while back. I got it laid here on a trade school video. Showed this young lady with her safety goggles on at a workbench fixed to work on a circuit card with a soldering iron and she's holding the soldering iron like this instead of like this. You know, those companies hire media outfits to do that that probably have no clue about anything other than how to take pictures and put stuff like together. Now, I'm not taking up the ARRL. They should have checked that because they know how ham radio operators are. So they should have checked that part of it to make sure that was right. But anyway, I'm not advocating for the ARRL or talking bad about it. And I certainly do not want to turn this into a grounding and lightning protection video talking about the ARRL. I'm a member, been a member since I've kind of gotten back active again last several years. Um, new guys, do you, should you join ARRL? Look, it's your choice. You're a ham radio operator regardless. You got a license issued to you or you're interested in getting a license. Joining ARRL is not a requirement to be a ham radio operator. Uh, but I suggest it, and that's all I'm saying is I suggest it. Lots of information you have available to you. Lots of tools, lots of study material. And lots of news that you can get on their website and lots of ways to study and practice for tests and learn CW and learn a lot about amateur radio through that, through ARRL. Um, I've always advocated manuals, books, information versus going straight on social media to get your answers. A lot of, a lot of hams hate the ARRL. Uh, a lot of them swear by it. I'm kind of, I'm just joining me and a member to kind of support it. As far as I can tell, they're the only lobbying representatives we got with the federal government as far as helping us with our bans. No other entity out there has got the power of lobby with the government that the ARRL has, right or wrong. A lot of people don't like the fact they think they had something to do with lowering the CW requirements back at several years ago. I ain't going to get into that. Uh, this is strictly talking about new guys trying to learn this hobby. I believe a membership in ARRL, at least for a year or two, will help you understand what you have available for you and understand this hobby better. So, again, not advocating, not telling you to, but I think it's something you should consider. All right, there's another aspect of ham radio that 
I haven't really touched on because I've never done it. I've seen it done, and it's been around for a long time, uh, and that's amateur satellite operations. I got licensed in 91. Uh, the only ham in our area that I knew that did satellite, satellite work was one of my guys who gave me my first novice test. And back in those days, amateur satellite was VHF, UHF, just like it is now, but it was single sideband, so you'd have all mode radios. And you had to have a rotor that would track azimuth and elevation at the same time. And, and he had a, he started out a little on the, on the economy side of it too. He actually had a stack rotor system. He had a regular RCA TV rotor like I've used for years. And in the top of it, he had mounted a Alliance rotor. And I had one, mine finally quit. The difference in the old Alliance rotors, RCA rotors, is Alliance, you could run your shaft all the way through it. So he had turned it horizontally and we using it as his elevation rotor. Then he had two separate Yesu mobile rigs, a two meter all mode and a 440 all mode. And Yesu used to sell a console you could plug them into for satellite work. Well, he eventually upgraded to a single, like an ICOM, I believe, dual band all mode radio and got the actual Yesu elevation and azimuth uh, rotor and done a lot of satellite work. Worked a lot of countries with satellites. Uh, but that was all single side band and it was a fairly expensive option in the hobby to get into it back then. Now, this is something I've noticed and this would really apply to a lot of you new techs that are wanting to do something other than your local repeaters. They got some FM satellites out there now. And guys are working them with a handheld. Uh, Jeff has got, and that's one reason I had to redo this video. I forgot to write this sound. Jeff has got a THD 72A Kenwood. The duplexer is built in, and it's got a built-in TNC GPS. It works at amateur packet radio service and satellite. He hasn't got the antenna for satellite yet, but he's got the radio cable for it. Now... Gigaparts is the only one I've found so far that has a little handheld dual band uh, VHF, UHF antennas that these guys are using to work satellite with. And if your radio doesn't have a duplexer, you'd have to have a duplexer. But the antenna, look them up on Gigaparts, they're, depending on which one you get, they start about 100 to 130 bucks. If you have to have a duplexer, they're probably another 80 or 90. Uh, and you got the radio and then pretty much you just have to know the direction where the satellites are. So I'm going to put in a YouTube channel here. I'm going to have it in the description, a link to it. Check out Digital Rancher. Uh, W5ITR, I believe it's call sign. Robert got a real good video. It's a real good YouTube channel. He does amateur satellite work and you'll see it. And working FM talking to the space station. You'll see a video of his wife working the space station with a handheld, one of her first contacts is a ham. If you comment on any of his stuff, he'll be a lot better source of information on that than I will be. I plan to hopefully to get into that someday, but right now I've still got other stuff to do. And I've always pushed you guys to get on HF, but this would be another option that you could work some different countries with and do some DX contacts, stateside stuff, that wouldn't require much of an antenna other than a handheld, and you can work it outside. It's love, real good for working remote stuff with. Of course, you can go full tilt in the satellite, just like you can HF. But check out Digital Rancher, and uh, check out his page. So I think you'll find some good information, some good videos there on computers and satellite comms. All right, uh, one other thing, check out uh, K, uh, Vern 6, KV5SIX, What's Up With 6. His wife, KR5SIX, KR5SIX, made a parachute jump at, at the Huntsville Ham Fest. 
and made some QSOs on the way down with a two meter talkie and set a world record of being the first woman ham radio operator to ever do that. So I'm going to have that link in there also to that video. So y'all check those out. Guys, we're 1,010 subscribers. I really appreciate it. We're going to kick off a giveaway next Saturday when I can get the prize guaranteed this week because I'll have it in hand. I don't like to start something. I don't have it in case something wants to foul up. Appreciate all y'all subscribed to the channel. I'm planning on being at the Mena Ham Fest on Saturday in two weeks. If any of y'all there, be sure to look me up. I'll have a shirt on with Ham Radio Cat and my YL Pound be with me. So guys, thanks again. Hope everybody has a great week. It's KB5 MIQ Big Boy, same three.